Okay, guys, clear. Do you remember the time when vinyl was king, and ABBA was the sound of the moment? For voices from Sweden echoed around the world, and then, silence. But what happened to ABBA after the spotlight faded? We are here to unravel this story, from the grand moments to the backstage, from challenges to glory days, in an exciting journey about one of the most iconic bands in the world. It's the true saga of ABBA, with details you've never heard before. The answer to all of this begins now. Over four decades ago, Sweden witnessed the birth of one of the musical groups that would become a global icon, ABBA. Their rise to worldwide stardom came with a spectacular victory at the 1974 Eurovision Song Contest with the song, Waterloo. Waterloo.
This was the starting point for a series of hits that marked generations and solidified ABBA as the third most successful group in the history of music, surpassed only by the Beatles and Queen, with sales exceeding 400 million records globally. However, despite immense success, ABBA faced internal turmoil. Personal relationships within the group suffered from conflicts and infidelities, eventually leading to the band's breakup. The consequences of these scandals affected everyone and became public 40 years ago. Before forming ABBA in 1966, at the age of 19, Benny Anderson already demonstrated his talent on the keyboard with the Hep Stars, considered the Swedish Beatles. At a summer event, Benny met Bjorn, a 21-year-old member of the Hootenanny Singers, a group focused on folk music. Together, they started composing, creating songs like, Isn't It Easy To Say, performed by the Hep Stars. This enduring partnership lasted for more than 10 years. The musical connection between Bjorn and Benny evolved, and they began writing songs for various artists. It was on this journey that they found their future partners and the other two voices of ABBA, Agnetha and Annie Frid, completing what would become one of the most famous quartets in music history. Before achieving global success with ABBA, Agnetha Falskog already stood out in Sweden as a promising songwriter and singer. She not only wrote but also had a hit that sold an impressive 80,000 copies in her country. Competing in a Swedish festival, Agnetha sought her place in Eurovision, and even though she didn't reach the final, she didn't stop succeeding, moving towards becoming a Swedish pop star. Agnetha's journey took an even more exciting turn when, backstage at a show, she met Bjorn Olvius. The encounter resulted in a love story, and in 1971, they sealed their union in marriage. Bjorn, in a BBC documentary in 2013, recalled how impactful it was to hear Agnetha for the first time, being amazed by her being a songwriter at a time when that was not common. And so, the story of ABBA unfolds, with all its twists and turns, from the heights of success to the depths of challenges. It was rare among young female singers. The couple, besides sharing their personal life, shared the dream of shining internationally, a dream fueled by the possibilities offered by Eurovision, where they began participating with their songs in 1969. In the same festival scene, Benny Anderson was enchanted by Anifrid Lingstad, known as Frida, who already enjoyed a solo career. Frida's story is a saga of overcoming challenges, born in German-occupied Norway in 1945, she came into the world amid war, the result of a forbidden love between her mother and a German soldier. As a baby, Frida came to Sweden, and after her mother's premature death, she was raised by her grandmother. Initially, the quartet collaborated informally, sometimes composing, sometimes contributing vocals or production to solo projects. In 1970, the idea of a cabaret show emerged but did not achieve the expected success. Persevering in music, in 1972, they recorded, People Need Love, gaining recognition in Sweden. People need hope, people need loving, people need trust from a fellow man. People... The song led them to the 1973 Melody Festival, where they secured the third position, solidifying their success in the country. Afterward, they adopted the name ABBA, a combination of the initial letters of each band member's name. The group's international breakthrough came with the memorable victory at the 1974 Eurovision with Waterloo, a milestone that not only put Sweden on the map of the festival but also marked a new chapter for the band, which, despite criticism at home, ventured into the global music scene. In the height of the 1970s, while music in Sweden was charged with politics, ABBA took a different path, aiming to create songs that people would enjoy. Despite some criticism for not engaging with the political issues of the time, the group focused on crafting melodies that pleased the audience. Critiques mattered little to fans who became increasingly enchanted with ABBA's sound, 
even if radio stations didn't play their songs frequently. This led many to buy records to enjoy the songs at home, ultimately helping the group sell more. The big moment came with Waterloo, which succeeded throughout Europe and made its way onto charts in the United States. After winning Eurovision, many wondered if ABBA would be a fleeting success. However, it didn't take long for them to prove otherwise with the release of the Greatest Hits album and another called ABBA, featuring well-known songs like I Do, I Do, I Do, and Mamma Mia. These songs became hits in countries such as Australia and the UK in 1975. Following these, came other major successes like Fernando and Dancing Queen, the latter reaching number one in the USA. This motivated the group to record songs in various languages, and their music began to be heard in many places around the world, even amidst the Cold War. The film, ABBA, the movie, showcasing the group's tour in Australia, even managed to be screened in the Soviet Union. In December 1977, alongside the film, came the album, ABBA, the album, featuring successful tracks like The Name of the Game and Take a Chance on Me. And it didn't stop there, Summer Night City and Chiquitita were released before the album Voulez-vous in 1979. However, in the same year, came sad news, Bjorn and Agnetha divorced, showing that even music stars face challenging moments. Throughout a decade filled with successes from 1972 to 1982, ABBA also faced difficult times. The divorces among the members shook the image of the ideal couples they projected. Agnetha and Bjorn got married in 1971 and had two children, sharing the joy of ABBA's success. However, after seven intense years of touring, the stress began to weigh on the marriage. Agnetha deeply missed her children and developed a profound fear of crowds, noise, open spaces, and flying. Rumors about her husband's love life also circulated in the press, with speculations about various romances. The pressure culminated in the couple's separation in 1979. Subsequently, Agnetha, dealing with the pain of separation and the challenge of going solo, faced a period of therapy, which, at the time, caused scandal. After the divorce, Bjorn took the spotlight when, just a week after the separation, he was already involved with someone else, a Swedish presenter named Lanair, whom he married two years later. In a heartfelt statement, Agnetha expressed the pain caused by the divorce and how it affected her that Bjorn moved on so quickly. She also confessed that the idea of facing life alone was daunting, and she was devastated when she learned he had moved on so fast. The tumultuous emotions of this period reflected in ABBA's music, which took on deeper and more melancholic tones. One of these songs, The Winner Takes It All, raised questions among fans, wondering if it was cruel for Bjorn to ask Agnetha to sing lyrics like, Tell me, does she kiss like I used to kiss you? And now I ask you, who's following this entire story, was Bjorn cruel when he asked Agnetha to sing this song after everything she went through? Tell me in the comments. By February 1981, the facade of ABBA's perfect couples crumbled when Benny and Frida announced their separation. They had known each other and lived together since the late 60s but only got married in 1978, the divorce came three years later. Shortly after the split, Benny married a television producer, a union that some saw as a reason for his previous divorce. In a statement to the Swedish newspaper, Expressen, in 1981, Benny said, I don't know how other people deal with it. Frida and I are friends, and I remain in ABBA. We maintain a good friendship, despite our marriage ending. We decided to keep the group together for the music, despite everything that happened. In late 1979, ABBA had everyone dancing with the release of, Gimme, Gimme, Gimme. Gimme, Gimme, Gimme. In 
2021, much to the delight of fans, the group decided to release a new album called Voyage, featuring 10 new songs, marking their return after a 40-year hiatus. And in 2022, the long-awaited comeback happened in an unexpected way, they took the stage in London through digital avatars that captured the essence of ABBA from the 1970s, with shimmering costumes and the energy that only they possess. Bjorn, one of the members, shared in an interview, we invested a lot of our feelings and efforts into these avatars, and it is through them that we will continue to perform. ABBA is like a family that, despite the fights and differences, never stops caring for each other. They did separate, yes, but the music they created together never stopped bringing people together. Each song, from Waterloo to Dancing Queen, makes us dance, and even the newest ones, like those from Voyage, invite us to continue the journey with them. Seeing their avatars today, with all the technology, is almost like a reunion with old friends who haven't changed a bit. And that's how ABBA stays with us, always current, always relevant, and always part of our best memories. They prove that good music and true stars never really fade away. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We're back in full swing and will tell you the most unforgettable stories of music, so tell us, what story do you want to hear in the next videos? See you soon. Where the baby